Yeah, uh, obviously a good start. I think we've moved on. Um, huge match tomorrow night and another huge one on Saturday. And then before we meet again, Nebraska on Tuesday. So a big week ahead. Uh, USC is unique. They played the same team twice last week. So scouting's a little bit different that you, you see how they matched up against one team rather than multiple teams. Uh, athletic group, um, really good setter. Um, yeah, they're playing really good volleyball. Kansas State uh, lost a heartbreaker to a good UC Davis team, um, but is playing good volleyball. Really talented setter on that team, too. Um, you know, that's a big regional bat battle for us. We recruit a lot against Kansas State. We've got a lot of Kansas kids. Um, so we're going we're gonna to be in for it again. And uh, I mean, kudos to our crowd. I thought this weekend um, is one of the best consistent atmospheres for three great matches. So hopefully that'll continue uh, into the weekend. Well, some of those sets could have gone either way. I thought we were good at end game, so that's good. Um, you know, I just think the first weekend is such a trap. You know, like you, you maybe come out and you play well, or maybe you fall apart. I mean, I've just I've had it both ways. Uh, you know, I, I think the exhibition match is is transformational now for us. It usually. Uh, a lot of times my lineup changes from the exhibition to the starting match. So those things help a lot. But um, no, I think we have some good pieces. You know, I just think, you know, we told the team we're, we're doing a lot of good things, but we still have a long way to go. So don't get complacent. Winning a couple matches isn't a season. You know, Kinder is a coach on the court. Um, she, it's so fun to coach her because a lot of our things aren't me telling her what to do. It's discussions with her. Well, what do you think? What should we do here? And I mean, we don't always agree on what we're, how we're going to approach, but we love those discussions. Um, so that's huge. You know, she's, you know, first thing out of a timeout, like how's my set distribution? You know, so she's really trying to get everyone involved. Um, physically just playing really well, obviously. She just is, she's the whole package. I mean, she's a great setter, but, uh, you know, her defense, I would put her up there with the best liberos in the country. And I'm, I'm not, I'm not exaggerating when I say that. You know, I, I had someone say she has too many digs. And I'm like, have you watched us play? Because every, sometimes she does take balls from players, but what she does more often is she makes plays that no one else can play, that they can make. Thus, her dig numbers go up. And then, um, you know, she's a, a great blocker. She just uh, is doing so many things well. Um, and again, it's, it's really fun when players like that are fun to coach, and she is. Well, Jaya came out guns a blazing against North Carolina State. She was unreal in that match. Um, she is a total work in progress, and it's going to be fun to kind of watch her develop. She she's really she's a middle. She's played middle pretty much her whole career. She played some outside in club. Um, I think we were a week in before she even realized that oh they're playing me a lot on the right because all of our middles play right side um, in practice. So anyway, you know we're trying to do a lot of one on one with her. You know, I mean it's it's back to the basics of where do you start your approach you know are you seeing the block you know things along those lines so she's got some physical gifts she's got a huge arm she's got really long arms she's obviously tall so some of those things bode well uh, for right side hitters well they've got pretty good offensive parity uh, they get their middles involved a lot. Um, their setter can distribute from all over the place. Uh, and then they're really good on, on the pins. I mean, they, uh, all their outside, both their outsides are formidable and um, their right side's got a big arm. And my understanding is the, their right side was a setter that didn't play much last year and she's got a whip of an arm. So, uh, you know, and they have some big physical kids. Um, yeah, they look, they look really good. Yeah, Batenhorst has been a great player since we watched her in high school, you know, so she's outstanding. It looks like she's really uh, carrying a lot of load for them, both in the front and back row. Um, 
yeah, I mean, she's one of their go-tos for sure. And I think the different role from, from her time at Nebraska is she's, is she's doing it as a passer and a back row attacker in addition to a front row player. Yeah. This kind of like, what, what do you mm. think about the landscape of, of parity in college volleyball this year in particular? Maybe compared to a couple of years past, or, or whatever it might be. Well, I was rooting for Nebraska and Louisville last night because we play them. You know, you always want teams you play uh, to have success. Uh, but if I look beyond Creighton volleyball, it's it's great for our sport. I mean, you alluded to it, but uh, the parity in our sport is continuing to get better and better. You know, it's the same thing that I talk to our players about, that everyone at this level is good. You can never go into a match and not respect them. And I think we saw that with, um, you know, SMU with, you know, a really, I mean, a decisive win against a very good team. And then Penn State, <clears throat> who everyone knows is a great team, but their dismantling of Louisville, a team that has beat two other phenomenal, you know, several other phenomenal teams earlier. I also think, you know, the rhythm of the non-con is hard. It's midweeks. It's, you know, you don't, once you get in a conference, you get a rhythm. You play Friday, Saturday, or you play, you know, whatever your conference rhythm is, you get into it, and non-con is different. And so how do your, te how do your players manage that? How as coaches do we manage, manage that, I think, can also play a factor. Yeah, several of our players talked about it, particularly our student section. You know, they they were loud for every match. It was Labor Day weekend. We didn't know whether they were going to come out. So that was great to see. Um, you know, I think it, it, it affects us, but I also think it affects the opponents sometimes. Not all, all teams, but some teams can get rattled by it. So, you know, it's a huge opportunity tomorrow. We don't get a ton of nationally televised games. So for us to be on FS1 tomorrow night, uh, you know, we'll have those national televised games, but in our home gym so that recruits can see what an incredible atmosphere we have here is, is big for our program. How about the thrill of playing on national TV today? <laughs> yeah, I prefer pepperoni, so I'm not really into it. <laughs> I am not, John, I'm not good at these questions. I, I don't know. <laughs> I need prep time. I like that. I like to have thought out answers to things like that. Yeah. You obviously didn't have a well thought out answer either. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Caleb, you should ask our tech coordinator. Caleb Sharman would have great answers to questions like those. Thanks, guys.